<coughs> All right, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to teach you a very, very special secret ninja martial arts technique. It goes something like this. I want you to look immediately to the person to your right or immediately to the person of your left. Hold out your hand and take their hand in yours. Look them in the eyes. And go, Bruh! Now find somebody else, grab their hand, look them in the eye, and go, Bruh! And then find somebody else and just keep doing it until you feel ridiculous. This is our self-defense. This is called the insanity defense. All right. Face up here, give yourselves a big round of applause. This is called the insanity defense. Whenever somebody starts to attack you, you go, bruh, 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 and, they'll, and then you hit them. All right. I learned so much. <laughs> There's a video. If you go to my, uh, my I have a, a page on my Facebook account called Martial Arts Mania. And every time I find a really good martial arts clip that teaches something valuable, um, I, I, I put it there for my safety, but you're more than welcome to sign up. But there's a, a guy out there who's teaching what in NLP uh, is called a pattern interrupt. Pattern interrupts, if you think about how your nervous system works, there's a sequence of things your brain must do to do anything. And there's a specific order it has to do it. If that sequence gets interrupted, the brain goes into confusion. Okay, for a split second, you're literally hypnotized and for all intents and purposes, blind, deaf, and dumb for a fraction of a second. Okay, um, back in the Korean War days, uh, the dogfighters, uh, one of the, the head trainers for the dogfighters in, in, the, in the Air Force came across this concept known as the OODA loop or the observe, obs Orient, Observe, Decide, Act Sequence. It's a set of processes that the nervous system has to go through to do anything. And the more information that the nervous system has to process and juggle the outcomes, the longer it takes to respond. And that discovery dramatically impacted how the American Air Force pilots were trained in aerial combat. We can understand that for self-defense by understanding that anytime somebody attacks us, they're going through a sequence of steps in their mind. Most of it is pre-conscious. They don't even know they're doing it. But if you interrupt that sequence at any given point, they literally, A, can't pick up where they left off, which means they have to start over, and B, for all intents and purposes, they're blind, deaf, and dumb. Their awareness of what's going on is no longer external. It goes inside. They go into daydream mode. And there's a guy on my YouTube channel that has taken this to the nth degree for use in bars and things like that, right? So it's, it's, really, it's only like a five or six minute video. It's really entertaining. But <coughs> once you, if, you, if you go and you watch that video with that concept in mind, <clears throat> you're going you're gonna to create a tremendous advantage in your self-defense. Remember something. Human beings are dramatically similar, right? Even though you're taller than Rose and... Brett's taller than me, and TJ's taller than everyone, uh, right? Even though you all are unique in your own special way, you're all beautiful, precise, precious specimens of humanity, but not that much. You're more alike than you are different, and that's what makes what I'm about to teach you today useful, okay? Um, we have a seminar coming up. I'm going to just put this out there right now. We have a seminar coming up in February, February 9th through the 11th, where I'm going to teach you this whole idea of psychological warfare. Uh, we call it mind hitting. The Chinese boxers, which is, this is not a new thing. The Chinese boxers hundreds of years ago called it mind hitting. And it was how to just create these gaps in people's awareness where you could literally just hit them without them seeing it coming. Right? That's part of what I'll be teaching along with, along with the seminar curriculum. But we're gonna, I want you to keep that in mind as we begin playing with today's topic, which is pressure points. Pressure points of the human body. Now, uh, my little pedigree, just so you know, I am a licensed acupuncturist and I, I have a, a master's degree in oriental medicine with the state of California, um, as well as, as I'm also nationally accredited. I have a clinic in Solana Beach where I've been treating patients with my, what, my partner and my wife, Dr. Don Liu, since 2005. My specialty there is treating physiological illness that has as its roots repressed emotion. So um, we, don't, we, we don't get a lot of smoke cessation or weight loss or things like that. We get some heavy-duty stuff. I'm a certified trainer and master practitioner in neurolinguistic programming. 
Uh, in fact, I'm ranked number two in the world right now by globalgurus.org uh, in terms of, yeah, so it doesn't suck. So I thank everybody who voted for me. I'll pay you later. Um, in terms of my martial arts, I have a ninth degree black belt in Okinawan karate, Rukyu Kempo, under a grandmaster, George Doman. That is an art that specializes specifically in attacking and manipulating the acupuncture points and meridians of the body. Okay. I have a second degree black belt in Kosho Kempo Ru, which is a, an old school, old Kempo variation. I'm a certified instructor in Combat Sistema, <clears throat> which has a unique set of pressure point applications within it, which we call structural pressure points. Um, as well as Aiki Jiu Jitsu. I'm not, I'm not certified in Aiki Jiu Jitsu, but I've studied it intensely for a very long time. Um, I am a current student of Tai Chi and Wing Chun. Uh, I'm certified a black belt in Fanku Ru Jiu Jitsu and a brown belt in Small Circle Jiu Jitsu. Hopefully, we'll get that black belt taken care of the next couple of years. <coughs> it's overdue. But anyway, I'm a late bloomer. And today is not about any of that. Today is about using pressure points of the body to protect yourself. Now, the best part is, if you were here for my Eskrima meetup, you get to pick up where you left off. You get to practice that stuff. But now we're going to take it to another level. For those of you who weren't there for the meetup, it's okay. We're going to go. We're going to go through what you need to know. You do not need to be a martial artist to use these points, but you do have to embrace and practice certain key skills. One of which is what we call state control, which is the ability not to lose your shit when the fecal matter hits the rotating oscillator. Okay. <coughs> Some of the things that I'm going to share with you are very simple, they're very easy, but if you don't take the time to practice them with the proper attitude, they are nothing more than parlor tricks. Okay? I'm going to show you some stuff that's going to be, just, there's no way that could work, and then you're going to do it on somebody and it's going to freaking work. That being said, I'm not here to teach you guys how to be the next kickboxing champion of the world or win the <laughs> next UFC, although some of you may aspire to that. What I'm basically here to teach you how to do is go home. How to avoid an altercation or if something goes down, how to take care of business and go home safe. Does that make sense? If you want those other things, we have classes and things for that. That is not what tonight is about. Uh, if this is the scope of everything I have to teach, I have time for this. So my commitment is in the two hours that we have, I will take you as far as I can. And I'll show you where to go for more if you would like to go further. Would that be fair? Excellent. So here's the first thing I want you to do. Everybody take your hands and go like this. Now get on your knees and pray. No. The reason we're here is because this is home for us from now on. Okay? Whenever our hands are not doing something, I want them to come back to your chest. Does that make sense? Okay. Pressure point theory. And we have, we're going we're to talk about, in terms of today, we're going to talk about pressure points in categories. First one we talked about was psychological. The pattern interrupts where I had you go bloom at each other. A, it does two things. A, because I'm a hypnotist, it does show you I can get you to do things you don't want to do. But there was a very famous martial artist about 30, 40 years ago. His way of dealing with bar fights was to spit in the guy's face. And the guy who got spat on would get so grossed out he'd run away. Right? <clears throat> Pretending to be nuts is a great way to avoid a fight. Okay? Just telling you. Why? Because it takes the frame of reference, the frame of mind, the psycho-emotional state that an attacker is in and breaks it. And when it breaks it, they go into confusion. When they go into confusion, you have time to do one of the things we're going to be work working with. Does that make sense? We're going to teach you other types of pressure points, other types of vulnerabilities. You have perceptual pressure points. There are places in the human body where you never even see it coming, did you? <laughs> She's like, <laughs> right? And I'm standing right in front of her and she didn't see it coming. Right? All of a sudden there's something that appears right there. These are called uh, lines of cancellation or dead zones. We'll be covering that also in the seminar. <clears throat> because if they can't remember, no matter how fast you are, if the guy sees it coming, it's slow. If they never see it coming, no matter how slow you are, it's pretty damn fast. A lot of us martial artists like to say, <clears throat> the punch that hurts the worst is the one you don't see. <laughs> right? <laughs> so keep that in mind. We want to be sneaky. We want to be more like ninjas than bouncers in a bar. Does that make sense? Although having that bouncer attitude is often a good way to avoid a fight. One of my by proxy mentors, a guy by the name of uh, Dr. John LaTourette, used to say, 
If you walk around looking like a bologna sandwich, don't be surprised when somebody tries to take a bite out of you. Right? So a lot of your self-defense is about your attitude and body language. Okay? There's different ways that, and again, there's a whole, these are whole different fields of inquiry. In terms of pressure points, psychological pressure points, perceptual pressure points. The next level of pressure point that I, we're going to play with is going to be structural pressure points. These are <clears throat> natural weaknesses of the human body that because you're a human being with a spine and two legs, work on you no matter what. They have the highest success rate of all the different types of pressure points because we're all mechanically, fundamentally uh, under the power of the, law, of the laws of physics. And when we understand how the law of physics works and how the body is constructed, we can make it fall real easy. The ground, we're going to teach people how to hit pe you're going to teach you how to hit people with the hardest substance around, which is the ground. Okay? We're going to do it in a gentle way. My goal here is to have fun. Okay? The next set of pressure points that we can talk about are the ones most people know about. Neurological pressure points. Seventh cranial nerve, mandibular nerve, mental foramen. And these, I think, get the toughest rap in the world, although they're the ones everybody talks about. Right? Vulcan death pinch and all these other things. Right? These things can work. They take a higher level of tool, a higher degree of technical mastery to make work. They were always considered an advanced level in the martial arts. Learning and playing with the full system of neurological attacking assumes that you have the ability to hit a moving target, that you have the ability to control your state, that you have the ability to do basic combat skills. If you don't have basic self-defense or combative skills already wired in, you got no business playing with pressure points. It's not going to put a big red S on your chest. However, if you follow the progression of pressure point style or categories that we mentioned, it will make attacking those final points dramatically easier and a lot more bulletproof. Because everything that comes before it has set you up to be more successful and give you the maximum amount of safety doing it. Right? <clears throat> so, here's your basic theory. One pressure point causes pain, usually right on the spot. If, um, let me use you, Rose. If Rose grabs me, now Rose is really tiny, which means she's got tiny pressure points, which means this art is ideal for her. Okay? Big person, big pressure points. It's easier for her to hurt you big guys than it is for you to hurt her with a pressure point. So she has the advantage. But she grabs me nice and tight, strong like bull. If I touch here, she lets go. She doesn't know why. <laughs> Grab tight, strong. <clears throat> <laughs> Some pressure points are activated by touch. That's why they were never discovered in the martial arts, but they're there, they're embedded in a lot of the styles and the, the, the forms that martial arts do. This art is called Kyusho Jitsu, which literally means, has two, two definitions, vital point fighting or one second fighting. Now, what is most commonly popularized at Kyushu Jitsu is the, the touch knockouts, where you touch somebody light and they go to sleep. That is not the vast majority of how Kyushu Jitsu works. It's a sign of technical skill, and as a demonstration, I can touch somebody and make them dizzy. In reality, I'm going to blast that thing with, every, with all the energy I got, or in some cases, with the right energetic polarity. Okay, a lot of these things, we'll talk about, we're going to play with the electrical system of the body. You're going to see how cool this gets. Right? I mean, I'm going to show you some really, really, you're going to look at it as that shouldn't work, and then you're going to do it, it's going to work. Okay? But remember, these are progressions, and it, a lot of the advanced stuff, and we're going to show it to you so you know where you're going, if you want to go that way. A lot of these things assume, they, they demand that you already know how to punt, throw a punch. You already know how to throw a kick. You already know how to, to move in a certain way, to stand in a certain way. If you don't have those skills, you've got to get those first. I'm going to teach you a, a fast track today. It doesn't require a lot of that. It's just going to, well, actually, it requires all of that. But it's going to be required at a very, very minimal level. It's going to be like the 80-20 plan. 80% of your, your technique is going to come from 20% of the moves you learn. Okay? So one pressure point, grab. One pressure point causes pain. Two pressure points will cause the pain to meet between the two points, kind of like touching the positive and negative battery cables together. They get a little spark along that nerve. Thank you, Rose. Okay? You guys all right? Yeah. <coughs> Let me use that because he's double jointed and he, and he doesn't break. <laughs> Besides, it doesn't look real cool if I'm, I'm beating on a woman, so. 
He's already signed the waiver. I can do that. So, so if, I, if he grabs me and I touch here, he lets go, right? If I grab here, actually, if I, do, if I touch here and I touch, now notice I touch here, not much happens. I touch here, it hurts. A, you can see a little bit on his face. But if I touch here and I touch here, I get a cumulative response. Looks is salivating. It's like, oh, I want that, right? Now, so one pressure point causes pain. Two pressure points cause the pain to meet between the two points. And so if I, if I enter energy into this point, I get like, a one, like an energy unit of one here and an energy unit of one here. If I measure that, I'll get one, in, one at this end and one at this end. But somewhere in the middle, I'll get a two. It'll cumulate. It'll become cumulative. Does that make sense? These cumulative striking movements... Did you do any, when you were, you didn't, did you train, no, that was, that was um, Amy you trained with Richard. You did martial arts before, right? Yeah. Did you do, you did Krav, right? Yeah. Did you do any, do you have any katas or, krav, or, or kata form type movements in Krav? Mm. <laughs> Kung Fu. Did you guys do these movements? That's Kung Fu. That's Kung Fu? Okay. These movements were never designed as blocks. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you. Because you've been doing that all day. With a stick, you didn't know you were doing it. I'll teach you, I'll show you. Okay. So one pressure point causes pain, two cause pain to meet in the middle, three can cause someone to pass out, or in many cases, uh, you'll see the, cyst, the body will just keel over. They may not go all the way out, but they'll be like in a TKO kind of, they'll get buzzed, a little flash. And that's really what a lot of Q-Show was. A really advanced Q-Show was that time, death, and all that other stuff, which ain't in your pay grade right now. It works, but... The skill level necessary to pull those things off is just not where most people are going to go. We're going to show you quick and dirty, right? Because quick and dirty lets you go home so you have time to learn all the other cool shit. But three pressure points done in the right order with the right stimulation and the right angle and direction can cause somebody to pass out, either completely or partially, which means they go into that fuzzy, staggering kind of a place where you can either push them away and run or finish them, okay? Okay? I personally like to finish people because then they won't come after me anymore. But if there's more than one, better to fight and run away than... <laughs> right? So, one pressure point causes pain. Two pressure points cause pain to meet in the middle. Three can cause somebody to pass out. Right? So, on this basic brush counter, the first move we're going to work on is brush check counter. But we're going to do a, uh, what we call the oh shit position first. Okay? So, in this movement, where we're doing brush check counter, we're going to be connecting dots. So whereas before in our, in our escrima we were hitting the hand, defanging the snake as the, the escrimadors like to say, in this situation now we're going to be attacking points on the arm and points on the head and neck. We're going to do it in a slightly different order than traditional Kyushu Jitsu teaches us because this is a finesse move and this is an oh shit move. Okay? And I like the oh, the oh shits are always going to come before the finesse. Okay? So, one pressure point causes pain. Two pressure points cause pain to meet in the middle. Three can cause someone to pass out. Now, I taught you two pressure points at your Eskrima meetup that will, will be your third point. The temple, that little back to front energy. You guys remember that one? And the, the, the hinge of the jaw, triple warmer 17, seventh cranial nerve. That nerve is weaker if I touch it here. That was just a touch. He didn't see that. He didn't know that was coming. I'm sorry. Right? But I touched here and I did this. Different. Now that should have been weaker. And I'll tell you, any, no pressure point can take three consecutive hits. But because I didn't have the setup nerve here, this nerve wasn't as sensitive. See the difference in his response? Right? So that's where the advanced part of the art is. And that's what's hidden in your martial arts katas and things like that. Okay? In the system we're going to learn today, we're going to go right for these finishing points. We're going to use them as the primary. We're going to come back. We're going to bounce into the arm. Then we're going to come back into the finishing points. So it's a little bit of a... It's more aggressive. So if you like aggressive techniques, this will help. So one pressure point causes pain. Two pressure... And I'm not going to hit you guys. Don't worry. Just me. He's already signed the waiver. <clears throat> I've been beating on this guy for six years. He hasn't gone away. It shows you how stupid he is. Anyway, <laughs> no, I love this guy. Right? In fact, I took him to Doman camp one time, and everybody thought he was my kid. He had, a, I, he had to go for therapy for six months after that. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. So four pressure points can actually kill somebody. Four pressure... I'm not going to do that. No <laughs> four pressure points, based on the old theory, can actually shut off an organ. Depending on the organ, it may take you a certain amount of time to fully go away. But there's about a 90% chance that if you know the right revival techniques, you can restart the organ. It'll be like nothing ever happened to them. Right? They might have a little blood sugar issue or something like that. Five pressure points, you turn off the organ and the backup system. So you, you need the crash cart at that point. Okay? Like I said, in, in seminars and things where we go around and we teach, um, we almost never show a full three points unless we really know the person um, and we, we know that, that, we, that we're solid with our revival techniques. Uh, behind closed doors, when we actually bring out the medical equipment, we have the, the, the EMTs on staff and things like that for advanced trainings. People have been known to actually be killed and brought back. Okay? But that's not what you guys need to understand. But I want you to understand that it can be that way. The one thing, though, that I'm going to caution you about neurological attacking is depending on how you've used your nervous system over the years, or I've used it in some cases. Ethnic background. Some pressure points will be more sensitive on one particular person than others. That's why I consider them less reliable than structural pressure points. You all have a spine and it's all basically built the same. Because of that, it'll work. It, what works for you will work on him, him or TJ over there. Okay? And that's what I like about it. It's consistent. It has nothing to do with neurological receptivity per se, but it's more reliable. And it puts the person right on the ground where you can finish. Okay? So, that's your basic pressure point theory. The first thing we're going to talk about is what I call the oh shit position. In my regular classes, we call this the rhino position. All right? Most people who are attacked are attacked because they lack what we call situational awareness. In other words, they're in their head thinking about where they're going to go, where they've got to be next, what they're going to do, if they're going to drop the kids off, pick them up, whatever. They're, they're not in the world paying attention. And so when the attack comes, if it comes from somewhere in the frontal plane or from the side plane, it's almost always by surprise. Okay? So the first thing that happens whenever somebody is attacked, we do this. True or not true? Right? This is the, this is the, so this is the, what we're going to, since this is what we're inclined to do anyway, let's make it good. So this is a basic oh shit position. This is what I call the rhino. So if, if, if Zach, use your left hand. If Zach is going to swing a, a hook punch at my head, this is my movement. I'm just covering myself. You see this? Okay, nice and slow so they can see. As it comes in, I'm here. I use an open palm and just, just heavy hit. All right, so the first thing I want to do is slow, put it down again, is I want to just bring it up here. I want to, I want, and when I do this, put it down. When I do this, I want to contour the back of my head and I want to keep a nice, solid... I don't want to push it out here because they could push that right into my face. Okay. And then this hand's going to come right up underneath. See this? Okay. You see a lot of people who are training in combatives. This is what they're going to. If you're going to wade through somebody swinging a stick or a knife, they're going to come in like this. Okay. So one hand goes under the arm. Some people like to do this one, which I'm not a big fan of. Okay. Mostly because my eyes are still ex my eyes are relatively exposed, but. So is my forehead. So I like, I like this a lot more. Okay? So uh, with the right hand punch, as it comes in, I'm going to come in here, boom, just like this. I want you to just get a partner and work that movement. Now your partner, we're going to start off very, very simple. You're, you're going to put, bring your hands up into this position. And all your partner is going to do, uh, use right side, left side, you're going to, they're going to do a nice, loopy, heavy hit. And it's not a, you're not trying to blast the person, but you want to have confidence in this movement. You want to make sure that that movement will protect you, right? So as I strike, he's going to assume the position, right? And I'm not, I'm not blasting him, but I'm doing a nice heavy hit so he can feel what that's like to take force, okay? For those of you who don't want to hit with a hand, yeah, yeah, you can do that. Actually, this would work really well against the stick. If you were going to have to, if you had to, if you had to close on somebody who had a stick, that would be how you would do it if you didn't have one, okay? Because it will get you through that arc of aggression and right into where you can do the knees, the elbows, and the headbutts, right? This is actually where that comes from. Um, 
So those of you who want to do something, you know, maybe you're afraid you're going to hurt the person. Um, I have lots of toys. I like my toys. So from this position, all he's going to do is practice his rhino. So I'm going to come in. This is all I want to do, all right? Now, again, you don't have to go that hard. He's just, I'm training him, so. But again, if you're, if you're just getting started, you're, just, you're not used to it, you can just, nice and loopy. And you notice how he leans into it, right? He gets his body behind it, okay? Because this assumes that we're going to finish, we're going we're to close and we're going to finish. I'm, if I run away, he's just going to chase me. Does that make sense? And if he's got friends, it's really over, right? So, this is what, in, in the world according to David, we call anticipatory attack. We assume the fight is unavoidable, so we're moving first. Right? So as, so as I come in, boom. And again, we can keep stepping it up, but now he has confidence in that. Right? And because he doesn't have to reach out for a limb, he's max, he has the maximum amount of time to respond. Anytime, as the strike is coming in, anytime you have to reach out for something, you're exposed. You have, it takes time for those hands to meet, right? Those of you who do brush trap strike, if he comes in and I do this, right? Boom. Broken, 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 right? He came to me. Does that make sense? So we are only here for a fraction of a second and then we're into something. Does that make sense? So if you want to play with, the, we have lots of pads, so don't be bashful. But again, this is, notice my position. I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. My eyes are forward. I'm not looking down into my, the crook of my elbow like a Dracula sneeze. Right? right? Right, like that. Okay? So as I come in, boom. Boom. Doesn't this look a lot like our screamer for work? Right? Okay, partner up. Let's play with that. Now, break. You guys are doing great. One little thing. Let me use the... Yeah, Krishna, right? Krishna. Right. So as Krishna comes in, what's happening, go ahead, you guys are going like this, and that's fine. When you, and, and some of you are actually starting to do the lean in, which is great. The next thing I want you to do is, if you're going to do the lean in part, as he comes in, as you lean in, bring your back foot with you. Oh, See what just happened? <laughs> when I do this, my body weight and my momentum are behind that movement. Oh, <laughs> If he comes in and I do this, I can't move any further. I'm stuck. That's my anchor. So if Stefan throws the punch, boom, I'm right here. All right? So I'm simultaneously attacking and defending. And then I can do all kinds of cool stuff. All right? So if you're going to do the lean-in part of it, which is fine, whether you want to just stand there and take it, do the lean-in, but now bring the foot. Imagine there's a, a very short bungee attached to your ankles. So everywhere that forward leg goes, okay, and that will always bring your body mass with you. So that, so that let me use Joseph. So that as I connect, there you go. see, that's ground transfer, right? That's way more than enough energy to activate any of the points I showed you so far, and you're just going to get stronger. Okay, play with it. <clears throat> Next drill. Let me use. Uh, oh, let me. Use, I haven't played with you in a while. Beat up the small guys, right? All right. So, from this position now, as the strike is coming in, I move in. I go to my my rhino or my oh shit. Again, if you're in my class, we call it the rhino. If you're in a self defense class, I call it the oh shit move. All right? Because again, we don't know what's coming, but this protects us, right? From this movement now. All I'm going to do, depending on how my orientation, my hip's a little bit open, so I'm going to take advantage of that. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to rotate my hip. So I'm here. Boom. Boom. Feel like, imagine putting a, a, a stick on the end of your bumper and just driving past someone at 100, 100 miles an hour and hitting them with the stick, right? So he's been with me for a while. I've trained him to take evil hits too. So, so as the strike is coming in at one... Now, he's a little shorter, so that movement can go boom, right across that nose, right? Zach, can I be used for a second? Yep. If it's Zach, right, as a strike is coming in, boom, right? Right? Boom. All I did in this movement here, 
Stop the movement. Now, this could be a hit, too. You see that? If I just step past it. Now what happens to that movement? Solar plexus is right there. Right? There's a, there's a fall zone right there. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted it. <laughs> right? But do you see how when I'm moving forward, that keeps me going? So, and what I used there was a structural pressure point. So we're going we're gonna to talk about that in a minute. So as the strike is coming and I'm here, my hips oriented this way, my weight's going forward, all I have to do now with this movement is turn my hip. See that? And even if I, like here, I missed him, right? That's okay. If I turn my hips back, this happens. You guys, remember that point? Let's turn your hips. It's like clay pigeons. Pull! Push! Right? So, so again, comes in, boom, my hips are oriented, elbow strike. Keep it. Don't take it off, don't, don't wing it, just turn your hip. And you can hit them in the, the pec for now, right? But that's my position, boom. And see how he buckles a little bit? Now, if you're small, secondary target, hip joint. Okay. The hip joint will put him right down. Okay, There's two kinds of joint work that you can do in the martial arts. You have what we call a hypoactive or hypofunction joint work and hyperfunction joint work. Hypofunction means I go against the flow of the joint. The, joint. the elbow wants to bend this way, I go against it. Hyperfunction means the elbow likes to bend this way, I go with it. Okay, Most people can automatically resist going against the way the joint wants to flow. They can almost never resist going the, dire the way, the direction the joint does want to go. If you're small, and my wife is 110 pounds soaking wet, so if you're small, you never fight uphill. When I'm down here, that will bring his head to me. Right? You always bring the mountain to Muhammad. Right? That's why people always want the high ground in a war. It's easy to shoot you, right? When, um, I need somebody really tall. Joe. <clears throat> if he's grabbing me, right? Choke. Choke. Yeah. If he's choking me like this, I'm, I'm reaching up to him. Look at I can't, I'm, I'm screwed, right? This is fighting uphill. Never fight uphill. Always make him come down to you, mm -hmm. right? Or in this case, come this way, see? Mm -hmm. Right? Or, as he's grabbing here, you tap him here. Mountain comes to Muhammad real quick. All right, tap him again. Uh, same place I showed on Zach. Same place I showed on... This is the, the inguinal crease, the hip joint. Okay? It's a joint. We're going to play... When we get to the structural break... When we get to the structural breaking part, I'm going to show you some really weird mojo. Okay? But... If, if, he, if he locks his, his body, look. He, he, I told him to lock his body. He couldn't stop that movement. And he knows it's coming. All right? Come here, Krishna. Lock your body. All right? Strong leg bull. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Right? That's just fingertips. <laughs> and see what he did with his head? All right? The minute... Remember, you're... I'll uh, use you real quick. Structurally speaking... The head, the shoulders, the hips, and the knees have to stay in alignment for you to be strong. Now, they can be in alignment like this. If you look at me from the side, my spine is straight. Right? I'm not bending at the waist. That's a big mistake that a lot of people make. My spine is straight. So I'm still in alignment. The head and the shoulders need to be in alignment with the hips. If I break that alignment, the only direction I ever need to move is down. He really tried. <laughs> That's how structurally weak we are. Anytime the head and the neck are misaligned in any way, all I've got to do is bend my knees and drop my butt. And they'll fall. Okay? <clears throat> we'll get to those in a minute, but I wanted, that's what's going on when I attack, especially for, and again, I specialize in small people. We have a height requirement in my class. <laughs> if you're over a certain height, you can't get in. Or 
forget to come in, but it's all his dummies. Yeah. <laughs> then we have this. Oh. <laughs> right. So when we come in, depending on... Here's, here's a principle I want you to get. We'll, we'll cover it more. Into, your, tool is, your, your target determines your tool. Your range determines your target. Understand that? So the distance I have to, I have to cover to the target will determine what weapon I use. Right? So if he throws a punch and I come in here, boom. Now, notice because of how he changed this, he's leading with that hip. So that one's not really as good for me, is it? That's okay. I have other things I, have other things I can do. Right? And there's your bargaining position. Right? So if he steps with that foot forward, so here now, now if I'm small, let's say I'm small and I can't reach. Oh, look. Now I can. And most people don't protect their hips. They don't protect their hips. So what happens is when they feel that energy going there, they think they're coming after, you're coming after the groin. You know what they do? Yeah. <laughs> they do it for you. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. It's like an instinct. Right? So I go this. Look. <laughs> right? <laughs> so you help me. Right? I'm down here. Look. <laughs> comes down. <laughs> right? So heads I win, tails you lose. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Right? All right, thank you, Christian. Yeah. Give me a round of applause. Yay. Right? <clears throat> Sorry. So as we're coming in, if you're small now, strike's coming in, boom, and you can reach it with your elbow, go for that hip joint. If you want to play with the hip joint anyway, but you're not small, just use your palm. Oh, look. There's that same pressure point again. Right? Everything we do is about bringing those points to us. But remember this. <clears throat> if a person can't stand, they can't fight. Okay? Even if they think they can. <clears throat> the minute his structure is compromised, he doesn't have a platform to launch a uh, counterattack. This is structural pressure point attacking. But again, we're, we're starting from the oh shit position and then going for the full course meal. As he comes in, I'm here, boom, boom, right? Here's my hit here. And again, we're going to play with that in a minute. <clears throat> but I want you to, we're going to play with all kinds of cool shit. But I want you to get this secondary target and I want you to understand that there's always a target. There's always a target. See how his leg is nice and locked out or straight like that? That's a break waiting to happen. Right? And in, in the sea lot, in a lot of the Filipino styles, we're just going to break this shit as we go in. Right? So play with that. We'll come back. Thank you, Zach. Give a big round of applause. <clears throat> break! All right. You guys are having fun with this, I can see. Good. All right. So we're going to go, we're going to do a little bit of retro back to our Eskrima class. I'm going to use Zach for this. In our Eskrima class, we talked about a moment, brush, check, counter, right? Remember that? Strike comes in, we go brush, check, counter. There's two basic ways you can do this. You can, che you can check or you can grab. So it's basic move goes one, two, three, and back. One, two, three, and back. If you haven't done this pantomime with me, take your right hand, windshield wiper across your body. Take the other hand, pretend to grab something. Take your back fist or your, your side of your hand and extend it out. Okay, so back to here. So brush, hold, strike, or strike, whatever, it can be anything, and back. Brush, hold, strike, and back. Same side. Brush, hold, strike, and back. Brush, hold, strike, and back. Left side. Brush, hold, strike, and back. Brush, hold, strike, and back. And back. Been a while, huh, Patty? <laughs> Brush, hold, strike, come back. Okay? Now, at the risk of muddying the waters a little bit, I want to make a small distinction in the world according to David between brush check and brush hold. When the strike comes in and I brush this hand, if I want to check it, I'm going to take the back of my hand, I'm going to loop it over top like this. Okay? This, doesn't this protects me just like a grab would, but it doesn't commit me to a lock. The Russians like to say, anytime you lock somebody, you lock yourself. 
okay, which is why Russian systemic people are the hardest people on the planet to do any kind of a traditional jiu-jitsu hold on. They, it's just like they're like made out of you know water or something. They just flow out of it. It's annoying as frick. That's why I love it. Right? So that's so as the strike's coming in, I go boom. That's a nice little hook. And if I need to use that hand, I'm not committed to a grab. I don't have to turn and I just boom. See that? So that's brush check. You can also do it this way. If we're going to attack pressure points on the arm, that's a real useful way to do it. But I like this for safety. Okay? You see this in a lot of the C-lot dances. There, a, lot of these, a lot of these fighting movements are hidden in their dances. Okay? So as the strike is coming in, boom. Right? It almost looks like my, my rhino, doesn't it? Huh. Wonder what I could do from here. Elbow, elbow one, elbow two, right? Or I could go elbow one, elbow two. Two pieces, right? Rhino, brush check. Or brush check, rhino. Got it? Strikes coming in. Boom. So now instead of waiting for it, right? Same movements we've been doing. All right, strike coming in slow. Boom. All right? I'm back into the same reference position. There's my eye jab. Hair grab. Throat. Triple warm, uh, hinge of the jaw. They're all there. Whatever you want, you can take. Okay? But we're going to work the brush check counterpart for right now. So as the strike is coming in, boom. Other side. Boom. He strikes low, boom. He strikes low. What if he grabs me? Same thing. What if he grabs me with two hands? Same thing. It doesn't matter. What if he, gra what if he does a hook punch? Oh, same thing. What if he does a straight punch? Same thing. What if he comes for my waist? Same thing. Brush, check, counter. Brush, check, counter. Okay? The next variation, and we're gonna, I'm just going to show it to you, but we're going to practice the brush check part, is brush hold. Brush hold is something we would do <coughs> more if we're going to do the old school pressure point approach, where we're going to activate points on the arm, and then attack points on the face. So the brush hold looks almost exactly the same, except as the strike is coming in now, I'm going to hold this. I'm going to grab it. And normally what I like to do is we like to... If you, anyone here drive a motorcycle? If you, you know the throttle on the motorcycle? Imagine his wrist is like... The, the skin on his wrist is like the throttle. You want to turn that skin so it's locked against the bone. You want to turn that skin so it's locked against the bone. That sets up two pressure points right away. So that when I come in here, now I have an eight times better chance of knocking him out with that strike than if I didn't have it. Or if I just did this. Okay? Both are good. For speed, for practicality, I like the brush check because I want to get to these points. Because these are the ones that are going to put him out whether I hit him really hard or not as hard. Does that make sense? These are the light switches, the on and off switches to the brain. Those are the ones I want to get to. If I can't reach him, if he's too tall, now I've got to bring it to me. You see that? So secondary targets, primary, but the delivery is the same. No matter what's coming at me from the front, it's either going to be a rhino to a brush check or a brush check to a rhino. Okay? So nice and slow, strikes coming in. One, I'm oh, sorry, brush check and strike. So I want you to put, the, put your hand now on the hinge of that jaw. I don't want you to blast him yet. What I want you to do is take that little knuckle to activate this point. You must move towards the tip of the nose. So if you go to acupuncture school and they're teaching you to, trip, to needle, this is called triple warmer 17 on the acupuncture charts. On the nerve charts, it's, it's the seventh cranial nerve. When you hit it, you've got to go in and deep. Now, for safety's sake, we're not going to hit it. We are going to push it, though. So as I put my knuckle in there, 
I'm going to push and turn the head. And I should get that response. Okay? This will, keep a, this will give us a very similar body mechanic to as if we'd actually hit him while preserving his face and his nerves. Okay? Because you can only take a couple of these hits before it starts to do actual... Even on a, on a light level, it starts to build up trauma in the neurology. So we want to place the hand and push. This will give us an accurate assessment of what kind of body language we're most likely to encounter when we, ra we act aggressively, percuss that point. So as the strike is coming in, I'm going to go one, two, three, push. And that's all I'm going to do for now. Is that okay? I want you to get used to your rhino movement. I want you to get used to your brush check movement. And I want you to learn five finishing points. <coughs> because from this, from <coughs> after you've got your five finishing points, no matter what else we do, we want to end our method, our, our assault, on one of those five points. No matter what gets in our way, we're going to go over, around, or through it to get to one of those five points. Does that make sense? Okay, let's go play. <coughs> Zach, why don't you come around and help? Yeah. Now I want you to think when you got when you when you go for that hand, there's two ways. It's either get away from me or it's mine, you can't have it. Okay. Okay, decide which one you're gonna do. Personally, if I if I know I'm gonna do a pressure point work, it's gonna be a mine you can't it's mine you can't have it move. I'm gonna see how close I have him to me. Now when I come in, that nerve is stretched and I get a really good signal conduction here. If I'm just gonna go in and just put him in the meat grinder kind of a thing, so as the strike is coming in and I'm boom boom boom. Right? Now that's, the, that's what I call the meat grinder. Right? Yes. I'm just gonna just gonna knee and elbow him through him, right? <clears throat> All right. We having fun with this? You having fun? Yes, no? How many people here um well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how many th how many how many parlor tricks I want to show you on him. <laughs> you thought she was your friend. <laughs> okay. So let's think about this. Okay. I, I've been I, all the little variations and nuances aside. What I've really been drilling you on this entire time has been this and this. And it's just how you combine them. And once you know your target, it's very easy to find them, isn't it? That's reality in, in, in self-defense. You're not going to have time to think about your target. You're going to have to see it. You're going to have to hit it. See it, hit it. See it, hit it. If you can't reach it, bring it to you. Does that make sense? Out on the street, that's all there's time for. And remember, it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be ugly. Okay? doesn't mean you can't have fun learning it. And, get, and, and, and aspire to technical precision. But street fights are never pretty. They're never perfect. You know, there's a saying in the, in the martial arts world that the, your worst day in training is your best day in a fight. Right? So think of the day you know, you've gone to the gym and just had the worst workout ever. Everything that could have gone wrong did. <laughs> right? And you st but you still made it through. Right? That's kind of what being in a fight is like. It's not what you do in the dojo that matters. It's what you do when the stuff you learned in the dojo doesn't work. It's learning how to adapt and persevere. And that's a mental toughness issue. It's not a physical toughness issue. I know some women, my wife is one of them. She's, I've seen her in labor. Not me, brother. <laughs> she is way tougher than me. I concede. All right? She's 110 pounds soaking wet. All right? It's not about how physical... No, no, I'm not going to say that size doesn't matter. Anybody who tells you size doesn't matter is lying to you. Okay? And not just in that arena either. <laughs> right? <clears throat> okay? And this is something that a lot... Very few martial artists uh, will cop to, but I'll, I'll, some will, and, and, and I, those who do, I, I applaud. Remember something. A trained big man will beat a trained small person. A trained big person will beat a, a trained small person. 
So you've got to bring something they're not expecting. You've got to bring a level of intensity or a level of ferocity or, or something that they're not, their training doesn't encompass to give yourself the advantage. Does that make sense? And in most cases, what that means a lot of times is not developing a complete comprehensive spectrum of every possible technique. More often than not, it's drilling very, very deeply into a core set of skills that have the maximum amount of versatility with the least amount of bandwidth it takes up. Okay? The 80-20 principle. Right? I call it Pareto's principle of pressure point fighting. Okay? At the end of the day, if your, part, if your attacker can't reach you, they can't hurt you. If they can't stand, they can't fight. They can't hurt you. If they can't see you, they're probably not going to be able to hurt you, right? Unless they got a hold of you, in which case, but even poking in the eyes will take somebody out. And that's the, one of the first targets I want you to start to concentrate on from this brush check counter movement is those eyes. I want you to, there's a lot of different ways to attack the eyes. Just take your prints or your thumb and just swipe it like you swipe your iPhone. You all know how to swipe, right? Swipe. <laughs> right? So I'm here, I swipe the eyes. Notice his head turn. This brings us into structural pressure point attacking. We take the eyes either from a, from a swipe or a thrust. Okay? For safety reasons, because most of you are not wearing goggles and things like that, we're not going to practice the eye jab, but I want to teach it to you. Because if you watch a lot of my techniques, some, most of the times it happens so fast you don't see it. So the strike is coming in. You see the eye jab? Right? It's, it's because he, as he sees, he sees cocking back, that hand movement cocking back. Remember I told you when a person's pattern is interrupted, they go blind for a second because their awareness goes inside? Whenever people chamber a strike, the same process happens. They literally, as the hand is retracting, their awareness is going inside their mind. They're making a movie in their head of what they're about to do to you, which means they can't see what's going on outside. So if you train yourself, if you think of your, uh, like if there was a chain connected to your hand and the other side was to his arm and as his arm cocked back, it pulled my hand out, they never see it coming. They never see it coming. Now, that takes a little bit more training, but we'll show you guys how to do that. That's part of the speed hitting stuff I'm going to teach um, in February. <clears throat> but... They can't see you, they can't fight you. So as the strike is coming in, swipe the eyes and turn the head. Even if you don't get the eyes, turn the head. Okay? Remember I told you that the way the, the structure of the human body is such that the head, the shoulders, the hips, and the knees have to stay in alignment. Anytime the structure of the human... Come on in, guys. Don't be bashful. Hey, Kai. Anytime the structure of the human body is distorted, the only direction you ever need to move is down. So, as I come in with my rhino, all I got to do here is drop my butt. Okay? Or I come in with my brush trap. He's on the ground. Now I have a choice. Finish or go home. Okay? So first one is going to be this. This comes in. Turn the head. Now you can base, since you have his arm, all I want you to do is I want you to, we're going to do this in a little bit different. I'm going to show you the technique, then I'm going to give you some drills to understand the principle. There has to be a little bit of tension in that neck. Can't be just at the edge of the range of motion. Has to be... <laughs> <laughs> so as I come in here, right? Now, if all I do is I base at, at his hip, I base here and base here, and I compress, now all I have to do is drop. Okay? Come here. <laughs> <coughs> just, just stand there. Relax. Okay. So I'm here. Here. I know. 
<laughs> no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> right? So, but this is the... Remember, all I'm doing is... And, and I'm not... If I, I just move him here. See, here he's... See, he, he gave me a shoulder. See how his shoulder moved? Yeah. That's all I need, too. Yeah, bye. <laughs> <laughs> he really tried on that one, too, right? <laughs> so, I'm not going to be... No, no! <laughs> I know. Right? So, as I come in and I distort the structure here... Look... You can feel him lock up. That actually makes it worse. Yep. That actually makes it worse. Okay? So we're going we're gonna to play with what we call structural distortion on the spine in just a minute. But the most basic one for right now is to get that head turned some way. As I come in, I move here. I can also, depending on the heights, I can reach up and around to that opposite quadrant and grab that hair right there and pull it like a pull thing on a lawnmower. Right? And then I can do all kinds of nasty stuff. Okay? There are pressure points on the scalp that will release the neck. Okay? But notice he's really tall. If, if Rose was trying to do this on, on Brent, it, it would, uh, Brett, it would never work. So she'd have to be sneaky. She'd have to come in, bring him low, and take the hair. You see how you have to couple these up now? You have to factor in the height. Okay? So I don't mean to abuse you too much. <laughs> Give Brett a big round of applause. Come on. Hey. Right. <clears throat> so we're going to come in. We're going to turn the head. Now, keep this keep one of the, either in the rhino position or keep this either check in the check position or the grab position. I don't care. Turn that head. And then all I want you to do, keep your spine straight, by the way. Don't bend. If you bend, you actually get weak and he'll get strong. That's right. Drop your butt, then drop your shoulders. One, two. If you try to do it the other way, it won't work. If I go... <laughs> even here. It's not working. The body is designed in such a way that force applied from the top down makes it stronger. Force applied from the top down makes it stronger. Force applied from the bottom up causes the body to crumple. I'll come around and I'll... Come here, Kevin. I won't do this too hard. Sure. <laughs> I'm doing this so I don't rip his shirt. But if I rip it, it's all right. I'll buy you another one. Look, nipple. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's sexual harassment. Yeah. <laughs> That's on the waiver. <laughs> it's on the way. That's right. It is. Right. I'm not doing this. Look, I'm pulling. I don't go. In fact, if you don't gotta go, don't go. Right. <laughs> Juju, judo guys, jujitsu guys, they're going to do this. They're going to do this. You don't need to do that if you understand the mechanics. This is the lost art of Kazushi. Somewhere along the way uh, in, in judo and jujitsu, the idea of Kazushi went from breaking posture to breaking balance. Big difference between posture and balance. They're referring to structural misalignment. I'm going to do it wrong. Okay? I get a little bit, but you see the difference? Okay? The body has to move in, in the right way. This was all hidden in the old katas, the old forms. I'll use Zach again. Big motor, little motor. Butt drops first, hands follow. Think of a T-Rex arms. <laughs> Can you just walk up to somebody? <laughs> right? Can I use you for a second? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going to try not to rip your shirt. <laughs> and now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something that's a little funny. Are you strong? Yes. Okay. I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> it's on camera. All right. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and pull you down. Okay. Okay. 
Not so much. <laughs> See, I, I felt it rip. I didn't want to. <laughs> All right. So if I go one, two, look. I was I'm just a little bit. I have to get my center below hers for it to work. She's really low. <laughs> right. But if I, if I just do this. <laughs> Epic fail. <laughs> Give her a big round of applause. So the idea is, because most of us aren't that big of a height differential, with someone like with Joseph, I don't have to drop very far. My center is already below, so I can go, oh. <laughs> right? Small person's art. Thought I was kidding, right? The minute you've broken their structure, all these pressure points become hypersensitive. So, boom, he's right in your cutting board. Right? But I don't yank. I go one, two. One, two. Notice the sequence. One, two. One, two. Right? There's a sp- and if you actually if you actually watch closely, it's one and two. One and two. It's the and that's important. How many, people, how many people do a traditional martial art of any kind? Or have? You guys know that thing they call a horse dance, right? Yeah. Right? Uh, who's got a good horse dance? Anybody here got a good horse dance? <laughs> Come here. Everybody thinks you're going to be a blowdown. Good horse dance. Okay. <clears throat> he's a strong guy. He's, he's young. I met him when he was 16. Isn't he 26 now? Yeah. <sighs> I'm so old. Why am I showing you this? Because these are the things that we as small people... We as older people, we need to be spending more time on. They're finessey, but they're, com- they're reliable. And if you build these in your techniques, you'll hit harder, you'll drop people faster, and you'll have them in the bargaining position. Bargaining position for me is right there, face down, ready for my po- me to hit them on points. So if I, if I push him, Damn it. All right. Strong. Anybody here want to, you want to try and move him? <laughs> Pretty hard, huh? Okay. If I stand just like I'm standing, I go one and two. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. Now, do you see how he moved? He went up and over. That's physics. Every time you walk, your body weight goes into the earth. Say 160 pounds of David goes into the earth. 160 pounds of Mother Earth comes back. (coughs) If I wait for the wave to come back, that wave will come up and conduct through me and break his root. Okay? It's the same energy that we're doing here. We're just sending it to the earth. Right? That's in Walu, we call that a wing arm. It's old school clothesline. Right? So, as we come in, turn the head. Big motor, little motor. Now, I'm being nice by throwing him. Strike comes in. Turn. Big motor. Right? Same idea. So, anytime you see me throw somebody, I'm being nice. (laughs) Come in, turn the head. Big motor, little motor. Okay? I'm going to show you some simpler stuff in a minute, but I want you to kind of play with that. If you want to, and actually start with this one. Start with this. Here. And again, try not to rip each other's shirts to shreds. Ladies might want to work together just to avoid modesty issues. (laughs) And all I want you to do is, notice I'm not, I don't have a death grip here. There's a sequence to my movement. One, two. 
This is hidden in Tai Chi. This is hidden in Wing Chun. I learned it from uh, a man named John Clody, uh, who was uh, one of the last remaining uh, practitioners of Yanagi Ru, Aikido Jiu Jitsu. He created his own art called Yanagi Hara. So I want to give John full credit for that. This crazy wild man out in the wilderness of Temecula. <laughs> <coughs> he does take students, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> play with this. Come around. Work with as many different people as you can. I want you to prove this to yourself. Okay? Because if I can do it here, I can do it here. You see that? There's whiplash waiting to happen. If I'm on a pressure point that releases the neck, big motor, that's probably not something he's going to come back from. You get it? Go play. The principle I want you to get out of all of this is any time the body is missile, the head and the shoulders are misaligned. Anytime the body is out of structure, the only direction you need to move to put somebody on the floor is down. Straight down. Not out, down and out at an angle. Not back and down. Straight down. Okay? Their body will fold in on itself. How many of you noticed when you did this a lot, you either projected, first they dropped and then they rolled? Right? Or they just folded straight down. The body will... You ever see anybody faint? Their body does exactly the same thing. The body's engineered to do that. It's the tension we feel when somebody's taking us to the ground that causes us to short-circuit that natural in, uh, in, uh, engineered protection. And so we, we, t we tense up, we, we straighten out, and when we hit the ground, we break. We need to get back our, our, our pliability. We have exercises for that. But... If you think of the spine like a stack of dishes on top of each other, okay, <clears throat> and they're all perfectly aligned, any time I can misalign the dishes, the body becomes structurally weak even if he doesn't feel it. That's the difference between balance and structure, or balance and stability. You have a lot more balance detect receptors in your neurology than you have structural receptors. That's why it's easy to maintain your balance. I can be very balanced here, but I'm not very strong. I'm not very stable. It's very easy to knock me over, right? Consequently, I can be on two feet and be extremely unstable or un out of balance. <clears throat> so, how many people here have a spine, just so I know? Okay. If you ever looked at a spine, you notice that right here, there's a little curve. This is called the cervical arch. Right here is another curve that goes the other way. It's called the thoracic arch. Right here is another curve that goes the same way as the cervical core. It's called the lumbar arch. What we want to do in this process is we want to misalign those dishes just a little bit. One that I, I, tend to, I like the most and I use most often, I find it most useful of the three, is the lumbar arch. It's very simple. All you have to do is take, base it either on the shoulder or on the head, compress this way. That's it. All you do is compress, drop. Okay? So, uh, Kevin, can I use... So, if I, if I go here, I just compress, and I <laughs> how fast they go down. Right? Can I use you? Okay. And again, it's not a big thing. <laughs> all right. This thing, right? Yeah, that's all right. We do this one. <laughs> all right. So, when we compress, right... Here. Now we, we right now, the mistake I made in the first one was when he when he did this. I went up top. When you come here, same rules apply. Big motor, little motor. See the difference? Can you feel the difference? Yeah. When I got up, when I got him here, even though he's structurally out of place, he's strong. He can backpedal out of it. But I come here. <laughs> he really tried on that one too. <laughs> And that's okay. Test it. It's a test, not a contest. Which one was harder to resist? First one, for sure. For sure. Was it easier to resist? Or harder? I mean, easier, yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Come back to the room. <laughs> right? So we can do this. We can take the eyes. We compress here. We have another one on the, th on the cervical arch, which I like too. But a lot of you guys are really tall. So I gotta, I'm starting from the ground up this time. Okay? So we, we compress the spine. Now, your posture's got to be good, too. Now, watch my movement. 
I know, you just, you just squirts out from under you, doesn't it? Yeah. Right? Now, sometimes you'll get stuck. You'll get to here and he'll lock for some reason. Here's the secret. <laughs> Bend your knees again. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's good. You okay? Yeah. All right. So, knees Zach again. Zach's more... Zach is, in case you haven't figured it out, Zach is hyper-flexible. His joint... <laughs> that's why I use him. He's really hard to break. He's tried. I've tried. It's really hard. All right. So when you, when you base the spine, and again, you can do this from... If, uh, sorry. I want you to see the spine, but at the same time, punch comes in. I can come to the outside here, and look. Here's my movement. See, once their butt squirts out, the mistake people make is they try to throw you. See how he stepped? The secret, any time he's in this position, watch my spine. Straight. You've got to drop straight. The more you kink the spine, the stronger he gets. There's some weird neurological feedback going on here that I, I can only ascertain as proprioception. I, I compress this. Notice my posture. If I try to sweep him, he steps out of it. Right? But I go here. It's just a little bit. He doesn't really feel like he's in danger. And that's what I want. I don't want him to know he's in danger until it's too late. You touched me on the <laughs> right? So, punch comes in. Turn the head. Base the spine. Drop. Okay. Okay. Again? Now, it doesn't have to be a punch. What's he come, maybe he's coming at me to push. There it is. Now from here, all I want you to do, strike's coming in, because I don't want you to, I know a lot of you guys don't want to hit the ground, but I wanted you to feel that. <laughs> He's got a story to tell you about. The time I was doing blood knockouts at one of the... <laughs> I want you to play with the spine part. Get that down. That, for you ladies especially, that's going to be a bread and butter move. Everything we're going to do on the spine. Because this is easy, this is even easier. That's called the hangman's reflex. It's a neurological response. It's the same concept. I have to move the dishes. Cyrus, can I use you? Now again... I'm using this to show structure breaking. This doesn't have to be gentle. It could just as easily be this. You understand? Yeah. This is a neurological response. So I'm going to let you play with it. Well, I want you to do the lumbar one first, then I'm going to come back and I'll show you a few techniques. Right? The idea behind this is to put him down. Now, what you do with that person once they're down... That's up to you. I like to hit the light, flip the light switch off and go home myself because I don't know if he's got buddies. God knows there's going to be someone around there waving a fucking phone cam. <laughs> right? It's going to wind up on fucking YouTube somewhere, right? Or Facebook page, right? So <clears throat> before we add the brush trap or the rhino, I can do all of these, all these movements I'm showing you, this, this, the eye jab, this. We can do it from the rhino. We can do it from the brush check. We can do it from the brush grab. Every single one of them, you can get to this, these points and put that person down. Is that useful? Okay. So the way you do this, you want to base on the lumbar, not the ass. Okay, that's a different test. Okay. Base it here and it distort the dishes. Now I can do it this way. I can do it this way. Okay. If I took a plumb line and I drew it from the center of his, his, his back to the floor, you see that line? There's the line. Now, here's the thing. When you do the drop properly, his body will actually drop the same way. If I got this movement and I move from the shoulders first, his shoulders will move first. But if I drop from my, my center of gravity first, his center of gravity will drop. And that's what he can't fight. When his own center drops, he can't fight that. Okay, we want to get below it. So I'm going to distort this. Now I can do it by distorting the shoulders and the hips. I can do it by misaligning the spine itself. 
the, the technique we're working on is on a misaligning the spine itself. It's a little more subtle, harder to detect. And then big motor, little motor. That's it. Compress the spine, drop. Big motor, boom, little motor, boom. Play with that, and I'll come around, I'll, I'll watch you guys do that, and then I'll show you how to weaponize it. Okay? Okay, break, circle up. All right, a couple of things. A couple of things. Just like when you, know, when you see a lot of the people on, on, the, on YouTube t t touching people on pressure points on nerves and making them pass out, that's a demonstration to show how light you can do it. That's not reality training. In reality, we're going to blast those points for real. When I, show, when I bring people up and I show you how easily and how consistently you can take somebody down using the principles of spinal misalignment and things like that, that is also demonstration mode, as Krishna found out, right? Because he said, can I, can, can, can I, do this? Can I resist it? And I went, boom, right? So, let me use that. so remember, when I'm demonstrating this, that's gentle. In real, it's, it's this, right? And this is bargaining position because there's my point. There's my point. <laughs> right? There's my point. There's my point. There's my point. Sorry about that one. Right? The idea behind this movement is you compress and you look at them. Doesn't matter what they came at me with. It's a fast down. It could strike. It could be just as fast as me just doing this shit. Right? <laughs> You're under arrest for littering the floor. <laughs> right? Now, I can be inside. Right? I can be outside. Here. I want to add insult to injury. Okay? But again, I'm just showing you variations of a few basic things. Brush check. Turn the head. Brush check. Turn the head. Compress the spine. This is lumbar. Okay? From here, I can pop him. That's just me going back to the rhino. You see? Just keep doing the movement. Right? Brush check here. Okay, next one we're going to work is the cervical. Cervical spine. Okay, oh, let's line up for a second, not in front of the camera. It is 4.03. Um, some of you may have to go, and if so, please go. If you had a good time, please post good things to the meetup. If you didn't, post to somebody else's meetup. <laughs> You'll get that tomorrow, I guess. But... Uh, for, if you want to stay and work a little bit more, I'll show you the, the cervical spine, which is one of my favorites. So, <clears throat> as the strike is... The way the cervical spine works, once again, we want, to, we want to screw with that curve. Now, this is a neurological response. This is my favorite one. Even though I use this one a lot, I like this a lot because it's a really fast down. It's really fast. <clears throat> so I can turn the head and base it here, or I can take... Don't be all wiggly on me and shit. Don't be gumby and shit. Where am I? <laughs> I'm going to pull this way at the base of the C7. That's that little big vertebrae at the base of your neck. And I'm going to compress this way. See, see what happened to his hips? That's a neurological response. Are his hips and his shoulders misaligned? Yes. Right? You don't have... I'm doing it a little bit hard... Because sometimes you, you guys come at it a little too timidly because you see me, the finesse I do it with. And so you don't give enough juice. But I'm afraid if I, if I show you the full speed application, you're going to hurt, you're going to kill each other and I'm going to get my ass sued. So if you're on the floor doing this technique, everybody agrees not to sue everybody. Or anybody for that matter. So you can work this from the rhino. As the strike is coming in, we come here, boom. And I can put my fingers right in his eye. I can turn his head. I can drop can do it all, right? I can do it from the brush trap. Right? That's usually, I don't even need anything else, quite frankly. I've got that head dealt, I've, I've dropped from the bottom up. 
But remember, this drop is me being nice. In real, I'm gonna I'm gonna hurt him. Okay. But you felt the power of this, right? You don't gotta be big. You just gotta be mechanically correct. If you have size and you have strength, this is even nastier. Which is why I don't touch, usually teach people like you. Why my wife is terrified of letting me teach you. She she saw him. She came to visit me at my class. She saw him. He goes, "Why is he here?" He moves too natural. Get rid of him. He's dangerous. When my wife says somebody's dangerous, run. Run. Because everybody, my wife is a 110 pound Chinese woman. She does active release techniques. She works with a lot of MMA people who consistently try to tap when she works on them. <laughs> Unfortunately, that doesn't work in her, her treatment room. Her hands are like daggers. <laughs> right. So those of you who have any kind of health problems, soft tissue work, some of the people here will vouch for the efficacy of what she does. I've been in fights that didn't hurt as bad as her health care treatments. Okay? <laughs> okay. So it worked. works really well. Now, this is the hardest way to do this. I showed these ladies here a little quick hack, which I'll teach you in a minute. But I want you to work with this one first. And the way you know you've got it is you've watched the hip. See the hip kick out? Okay? It's not a big movement. All right? Uh, Krishna, can I use you? Yeah. You have to wash my hands. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. so it's, it's really quick. You see how fast? Uh, Stefan? <clears throat> Usually I go around and do this to everybody, but it's how I get my practice in. <laughs> no, <thanks. laughs> I'll go slow. This is, and that's how you, over here. That's how you test this. You can go... The, the secret to a lot of these movements, if, they're, if the principles are correct, you can go as slow as you want as long as you don't stop. You can go as slow. That's how you test it. So I could literally go, ah. See how slow? That wasn't really hard, was it? No, no, it wasn't. Say, huh. I think I'm going to stay down. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a big round of applause. Yeah. Sorry. So now, this, this can be done from any... If, like if I'm at a slow dance and he's getting a little too fresh, I can take his... Right? Right? So, again, base the forehead, base at the C7, compress. When, the neuro when you activated the nerve, the hip kicks. You see that? This is called the hangman's reflex. Okay, this is a valid, boom, and then just drop. Now, you see how he's laid out nice and nice little table for me to, big motor, little motor him? Big leg drop. Big leg drop. Well, that, that's the nasty part is I'm here, right? Look where my legs are. Right? Bargaining position, right? And again, like I said, I'm not, I'm not here to turn you into Bruce Lee or the next UFC champion. I'm teaching you some things that do not require physical strength, but they do require skill. But they're solid, they work, and they don't expect them. And if they, if they don't expect it, they don't know how to counter it. Okay? But you got, it, again, if, if you come home from the, today's training, you go, oh, I learned all these cool things, and you never do them again. They were nothing but a parlor trick. Okay? But if you practice them, and it can be as simple as doing this in the, in the mirror, 10, 12 reps a day, knowing what you're doing, right? It doesn't have to be extensive, but it has to be consistent. So get your partner. We'll, we'll take another 20 minutes just to play with this. Do the, do the spinal compression that's on the cervical, and then we'll let you guys kind of freestyle a little bit and just put these things together without murdering each other. Go play. Mm -hmm. I'm fun? <laughs> you want to feel it or not? Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. So, you do, is there a special point where you... Where you not really. Go? You can go pressure points if you want, but really what's important is you find the base of the cervical spine and the forehead, and you compress them just like that. And, and when you do it right, you'll see that. See how the, 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 yeah. the butt just shoots yeah. forward? <laughs> Once you got that, it's over. Okay. But if you, if you try to push them or pull them, 
or you try to push them down, they'll get stronger. It'll be harder to do. But if you drop from the bottom up, like I've been showing you, they'll go right to the floor. Mm -hmm. Break. Okay, when you got them in that bridged position, remember something, when you got them in that, when, when, whether you've come in with the, rhino, with the rhino or the brush check, either to the outside or to the inside, you've got them in that bridged position, that's bargaining position. You have a choice at that point. You can let them fall or you can break them. Right? But that's what I like. I'd like I, I, want you to, I want you to get in these positions and then make a decision as to how you want to proceed. Right? Good. That's better. Right? Um, questions about anything? Kevin, what'd you learn today, brother? Yes, if you learn nothing but that. Right? Remember, not out to the side. That's airing out your armpit. It's here. All right? My, and one of the things I, and, again, and people vary on, on this point. I, when I do this, I like to bring my elbows as close together as I can. Really a buttress the structure. Some people, their, their shoulders aren't that flexible, so they can't do that. Whatever you're going to do is going to be good enough. But base the head up here. So you can be at the side. You can be up here. I'm not always a fan of this one because it, it tends to block my vision here. And I don't like that. I like it more off to the side. Um, but again, those are just variations on a theme. So in review, we talked about, oh shit, we're just standing there. Right? Right? <laughs> we talked about the, the rhino, which is, again, moving in. From here, we've talked about elbowing to the soft portion. If they're over top, we can come over top here. We talked about if their, their arm is naturally going to be either right alongside here, we can drop this through. That's actually, let me use Zach. Oh, I'll use Cyrus, too. So we've talked about, oh, shit. <laughs> right? We talked about rhino here. We talked about rhino and rotate. Boom. Right? We talked about, from here, coming in, locking this. Right? We didn't actually, we didn't play with this when I showed it a couple of times. And there's two variations on this. Okay? You have the arm lock, which puts him in front of you. You have the arm wrap, which makes him want to fall. Okay? You're not really going to get to choose many times which one you wind up with because usually the velocity of this is going to, it's going to determine it. Right? But again, once I, it's all right. Hava, nagila, hava. Russian folk dancing. <laughs> Which is where the stomach comes from, by the way. All right. So, so we have here, we have this. I1, I2, right? Head turn, lumbar. We talked about the internal engine. Yes, you can do it from there too. Right? So as I come in, boom. He tried on that one. Big motor, little motor. Right? Uh, we talked about brush check into cervical. Uh, straight punch. Brush check, lumbar. Right. So these are all things you can do. And they're all designed to get us here. So we can put them here. Does that make sense? Or we just, one last time, we just put them here. Yes. <laughs> right? It's not about being brutal. Thank you, sir. Give him a big round of applause. Thank you. Right. It's, it's not about being Bruce Lee. Or you know, Horian Gracie or Hoist Gracie or whoever UFC fighters you love, okay? It's about a few simple things that do not necessarily rely on being big and strong, but do rely on having a little bit more understanding of how the body works, the ability to control your own state. In other words, to have this ingrained enough in you that you can just go to it when the fecal matter hits the rotating oscillator, okay? Like I said, if this is the scope of everything there is, we covered this, but there were some pretty radioactive pieces, right? And that's what I like. Because you can take these things, they're modular. They will work within any martial arts system you practice. I don't care if you're a judo person, an aiki person, an eskrima person, a krav person, 
Sistema, Okinawan karate, Japanese karate, Kung Fu, tai, it does not matter. These are the, what Grandmaster Rami Prisas would call the style within the style. These are secrets that you can incorporate into every technique you do and make them more powerful. Or just use them as standalones and create your own personal method. But none of it matters if you don't practice and you don't have bodies to work with to get the feedback. Does that make sense? So thank you all for staying. Um, if you had a good time, post good things to the meetup. If you didn't, post to somebody you hates meetup. <coughs> and uh, I hope we'll see you soon. Uh, for those of you who are interested in going for classes or things like that, talk to me after the event. God bless. Have a great, great day.